Congratulations to Manchester City. Champions League winners for 2022-2023, completing the treble along with the English Premier League and the FA Cup and becoming only the second English team after Manchester United in 1999 to do so. Scenes and celebrations for days and probably over the summer, Janusz Mihalik for Manchester City. I suppose the only thing that could have gone better for them today would have been a performance like we saw against Real Madrid. It was a scrappy final. They will not care one jot. And the goal from Rodri, the difference between the two sides. Uh, absolutely. Uh, the best team in the competition has won it. It's something of a holy grail that they've been chasing. I think we were aware of the fact that they were uh, good enough in previous editions of that to win it. But, uh, you know, it's a funny competition sometimes. Uh, you don't have to be at your best to win. And they certainly weren't at their best. I think Inter did a tremendous job throughout the game, especially early, to make sure uh, that this final is not decided. Like, as you've mentioned, maybe in a game against Real Madrid uh, where they're superb early on, or even in a game against Arsenal that pretty much much decided the Premier League, uh, right, with such intent, pace, and energy. Inter took all of that away, Mark. Uh, Inter has played that game, at least the first half, on their terms. And I think everybody was surprised with that to a degree, although I think everyone respected Inter, and I think we knew that they were capable of doing that. You wouldn't have, have thought when he came on that Romelu Lukaku would have such a big part to play without even scoring. But first of all, it gets in the way of DeMarco's effort after his initial effort has hit the bar. And then somehow, you can tell me, is it a save or is it a shocker of a miss? Because he's got a score. And Ederson was probably Manchester City's best player for the last 20 minutes. But he was pushed close by Lukaku. Uh, it's a miss, uh, uh, but you know, uh, you know that opens up, uh, you know, if not Pandora's box, uh, at least mm. a conversation between you and I, and and when Rob comes in, maybe, and our viewers right now, because uh, ahead of the game we had some dilemmas, both managers. Although I think Pep Guardiola maybe more so than uh, in a way in Zaghi, Although I'll, I'll question that because with Pep Guardiola we thought we knew who was going to start. He stopped tinkering. This wasn't going to be, you know, lack of Rodri against Chelsea. Uh, in the in the last final that Manchester City were in, but yet Kyle Walker doesn't start. And it wasn't for the reasons that we thought because he was injured, unless Pep is lying. He said it was tactical. I can sort of understand that uh, because he probably felt that he wanted two central defenders against two strikers that Inter plays mm -hmm. uh, with, which not many teams these days play. And I think I could see that, uh, you know, Stones being a better right back and hybrid defensive midfielder, but I'm not sure if that worked because I think City lacked that energy and the pace, which they don't really have uh, without Kyle Walker uh, anyway. But the bigger dilemma was, and one that I had no answer to ahead of the game, is that part of me felt that Lukaku needed to start. If you go in a final, play with the best team that you have. And even though Jeko has played and played well, and we all felt that Jeko going to start, I just did not think that... Uh, uh, in a big game like this, with the perfect understanding that Lukaku uh, and Lautaro have, and you and I covered Serie A in the past, remember two seasons ago, mm -hmm. uh, they were breathtaking together. I just thought in the form that Lukaku was and what he offers on the break, right? Lukaku, for me, should have started. Play your best team, play your best players. And as good as Inter were, Mark, in that first half, they lacked one thing. They created nothing. They created nothing. Yeah. And Lukaku stopped one goal, should have scored, but maybe from the beginning he would have been a better, th bigger threat. It was probably the first 25, 30 minutes that Inter, I suppose, were the best team without really creating, but it was a puzzle for Manchester City to solve. But there were signs after the half hour that City were getting a little bit of space and it was up to Inter to decide how much they wanted to, to push forward. But you could see that Pep wasn't happy during the first half with some of his antics on the touchline. What do you think he said to his players at halftime? And did you see any tweaks before any changes were made by Pep in the second half that no, opened things well, up for City? Yeah, I mean, great, great question, really. I mean, you led me to what I really, you know, what I wanted uh, to talk because, you know, with Inter, with Manchester City, we often talk about these players at the highest level don't get nervous. Yeah. I mean, clearly. I mean, the one thing other than great control of the game by Inter, what they did, it was most important, right? Uh, they seeded doubt, nervousness, introduced pressure to Manchester City, who otherwise doesn't really feel it, right? When you watch them in all competitions and even in this Champions League, right? So I, I think at halftime, if I were Pep, uh, you know, I go into that halftime and say, hey, boys, we were crap. But you know what? 
Inter didn't do anything. They stopped us doing from what we want to do. So let's just get back to ourselves a little bit, right? And, and you know, and, and the other issue, I suppose, is that, you know, the loss of Kevin De Bruyne was big. Up until yeah. that point, he wasn't great. Although I don't know if you remember that chance that he created for, for Erling Haaland. Just before his injury, he started to look normal. And by the way, mm -hmm. if he stayed on the pitch, he would have found the game. Because everything that's good starts and ends, in my opinion, or maybe not ends, but you know what I mean, with, mm -hmm. with, with, with Kevin De Bruyne. When he left, Erling Haaland looked like a little kid in a, in, in a fog. Absolutely, totally lost in the game. But when he went off, it, we've seen him over the past few games when he's been available. And it, it kind of it took me back to two years ago when he only lasted an hour against Chelsea in the Champions League final. And you felt for him. And it, and it did take a little bit of time for Manchester United to, Manchester United, Manchester City to readjust because you've got Foden coming on. He's playing in a slightly different position mm -hmm. from where he normally plays. But they eventually found a way. And is that the sign of a really good team under a really good coach? A, not being at their best, but still finding a way. And B, Pep Guardiola might took him a little bit of time just to see what the opposition's up to. But in the end, he's pretty confident that over 90 minutes or 120, if it takes that, he'll be able to work them out. Look, you, you can't question any of that, right? I mean, uh, the way they want it. Uh, sometimes you have to grind it out. Uh, mm -hmm. just, just look no further. Uh, look no further than last season. I mean, they were great against Real Madrid. They were the better teams oh, and yeah. what, over 90 and they lost. It really doesn't matter. I mean, they had one goal and one goal only. And that pressure, by the way, Sheikh Mansour is there only for the second mm -hmm. time ever, right? Yeah. I mean, players feel that. They won't admit to it, but you know how important that is. You know, we always talk about that maybe for Pep, he's won it already in the past. He doesn't have to worry about it. This is the second time, you know, he, he's won a treble, by the way, with two different teams. So, you know, uh, players don't feel pressure. Supporters don't care about the Champions League league players do care about that and you know the people that own Manchester City do care about that so that pressure always exists and you know I don't know if this was a part of it but it certainly uh, they felt it but they found it as I've mentioned this was the best team in terms you know they haven't lost a game uh best defense uh uh in the competition as well uh so you know what can you say about that uh, uh they won't care how because that mon monkey is off their back Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.